Major breaking news out of California. A federal district court has declared that California's effective statewide ban on gun shows, believe it or not, is unconstitutional under the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this discussion of Orange County and California lawmakers at their craziest. Stay tuned. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box of Diner, proud American governor, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarm, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms, Lessons that the Israelis Could Have Learned Before the Hamas Attacks. All right, folks, so major breaking news here out of California, the Central District of California, in a case called BNL Productions, which includes, other, among other plaintiffs' organizations, the California Rifle and Pistol Association, the Asian Pacific American Gun Owners Association, the Second Amendment Law Center, and the Second Amendment Foundation, have won a major victory. Specifically, they've won a preliminary injunction that has not been stayed, by the way, against the state of California in terms of its enforcement of its quote-unquote gun show ban that essentially bans gun shows from public property. Like, for example, fairgrounds in places like Orange County, California. Major victory. The judge here, uh, Judge John Holcomb, entered this order based on two legal grounds that the specific targeting of gun shows violated the First Amendment's right to free speech, the free association, and so on, and as well as the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms because you can't keep, which means to possess, and bear, which means to carry arms, unless you can first and foremost buy them or train with them or learn about them. So Judge Holcomb basically entered an injunction. California said, please, please, don't, don't allow this injunction to take effect. We want to seek a stay. We want to stay to get the opportunity to go to the Ninth Circuit. And Judge Holcomb says, no can do, and refused to even grant that a day or two stay for California Great job by Judge Holcomb. Let's talk about how he breaks it down. To begin with, just to let you know how this works, for those of you outside of California, because it's crazy, the California legislature, remember, one of the things I said, I actually had an interview uh, today uh, with the Epic Times, and one of the things I said to them is what's happening with the anti-gun movement in America is they're doubling and tripling down in the blue states they control, the governor's office, the governor's mansion, as well as the legislatures. Uh, so California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, uh, these are insane places when it comes to guns because they're doubling and tripling down because it's a waste of money for the anti-gun movement to go to these other red states. So now they're just spending all their money, of which they have an infinite amount of money, uh, you know, in these blue states. And that's exactly what happened here with California. So specifically, the California legislature and Enacted two statutes that effectively banned gun shows at the Orange County Fairgrounds and more broadly on state-owned property generally throughout the state of California. This is part of the opinion. I'll put a link to it down below. It goes on to say that the plaintiffs, of which I've articulated the bulk of the plaintiffs, there's also some individual plaintiffs involved. Congratulations to all the plaintiffs in this case, by the way. Uh, the plaintiffs moved for a preliminary injunction, arguing that these statutes infringe both upon the First Amendment's uh, freedom of speech rights in a public forum, as well as the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And I'm happy to report that the judge says that the plaintiffs are likely to prevail on both the First Amendment arguments as well as the Second Amendment arguments, and thus he is enjoining California from enforcing this law until further notice. So specifically what happens here, this is just, this is just so shocking um, that there's an dis excellent discussion here on pages uh, three and four of this opinion about how gun show regulations work in California. This is before, mind you, this is before the actual de facto ban on gun shows on public property. Let me just read to you the essence of the rules and regulations that go on with these California gun shows. Again, before the law that ultimately got struck down. Here's what it goes. Plaintiffs contend that California has the most rigorous regulatory regime for commerce and firearms and ammunition in the United States, and that those regulations apply to all gun shows throughout California. I'm sure that's true. Only state-approved licensed gun show producers may operate gun shows in California. A producer is defined as one who holds a certificate of eligibility issued by the California Department of Justice. I mean, that's a, obviously a HUI certificate, uh, just essentially a tax uh, on regulation. Always keep in mind, by the way, generally, step back for one second, all regulations in all contexts, not just in guns, not just in ammunition, not just in the Second Amendment, all government regulations, 100% all government regulations are essentially taxes because the cost of complying with those regulations 
functions as a tax on the people that have to comply with the regulations. So every single time you see the words tax and regulations, understand that regulations really are just another form of taxation on productive activity, just to keep that in mind as a, general, as a general sense. Okay, now let me get back to the opinion. So it goes on to say that among other things, these gun show producers must certify that they are familiar with all these laws and regulations involving gun shows. They have to possess a, a minimum million dollars in liability insurance. They must provide an annual list of such shows or events to the California Department of Justice, and they must provide law enforcement with a list of all vendors that will participate in the gun show to sell, lease, or transfer firearms. Vendors must also provide an annual event and security plan to the California Department of Justice and to local law enforcement uh, uh, law enforcement agencies. I mean, a security plan. What you know? How do you the in, uh, the exits and whatnot? Set that issue aside. Let's continue on. It goes on to say that all gun show vendors must comply with all California state laws, and gun show producers must post signage saying that participants must comply with state law and that and that each firearm carried into the premises will be checked, cleared, and secured before its owner is admitted to the gun show. And this goes on and on and on. And here's the other critical thing, though. <clears throat> Except in limited circumstances that are unique only to law enforcement, actual firearm transfers are prohibited. Do you hear what I just said? Under California law, actual firearm transfers are prohibited from taking place at any gun show in California. Firearm sales may be initiated, initiated through an on-site licensed transfer dealer, but the delivery of the firearm cannot be completed at the gun show itself. Instead, the purchasers of the gun must pick up their purchased firearm at a licensed retailer at a different location following a 10-day waiting period and a successful background checks. Plaintiffs claim that as a result, there is no gun show loophole at gun shows in California, which must operate in accordance with state law. Obviously, this is all true. Nevertheless, despite all of that onerous hooey um, under state law, California um, teaches us that uh, sometimes uh, if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Remember, one of the critical things I've always taught you here is that when these anti-gunners double and triple down in these blue states, yes, they make it in the short run more onerous for gun owners and people in the gun-related space and the Second Amendment space. That's all true, and that's terrible, and I don't support that at all. But never forget that their bad behavior can sometimes be so egregious that they get spanked by judges. This is why we got the Heller decision in 2008, because the District of Columbia banned handguns in D.C. for everyone but law enforcement, and they got destroyed in Heller, giving us a great Second Amendment precedent. New York State, of course, would not allow anyone to carry except going mother may I to the state, gave us Bruin because of that stupid law. Caetano, uh, the stun gun ban in Massachusetts, totally silly. Nevertheless, that gave us the great Second Amendment precedent of Caetano. And of course, the city of Chicago's ban on handguns gave us the great powerful Second Amendment precedent of Chicago, uh, of McDonald versus Chicago. So the reason why I point this out is this is another example where California had strong regulations on the buying and selling of firearms and the running of gun shows, and they were not satisfied because they want to virtue signal. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about security. They don't care about public safety. That is all hooey. They want to be able to virtue signal to their billion dollar donor class and other people in the media about how tough they are on guns. That's all they want to do. But the downside to virtue signaling like this is exactly what happened today, which is that if you overplay your hand, you get to destroyed in the courts. And the good news is everyone in the Second Amendment community, and by the way, even in the First Amendment community, can now use this precedent by Judge Holcomb all around the country. So if we have to deal with a gun show problem in Maine or in, in Minnesota or in Florida or whatever, we now have a precedent that we can use as a arrow in our quiver, in our arsenal of attacks on the anti-gun movement all over the United States. So thank you, California, for overplaying your hand and giving us this great legal precedent, which we fully intend to use against your little buddies all across this great country. But let me continue. So basically, they talk about two laws, SB 264 and SB 915. We won't bore you with the details in this. Suffice it simply to say that effectively, essentially, 
Um, and this is a great quote from Senator Min, uh, who says the following, quote, Today I am proud to announce that California will become the first in the nation to enact a total ban statewide when it comes to entering into co contracts for allowing people to engage in gun shows. So basically they said, hey, you know, we're, go we're going after the guns, which of course is a fundamental right. And of course you are entitled to talk about fundamental rights and constitutional rights. So bottom line is big time trouble. So then what happens is the court says, okay, let me analyze this. So the first thing they say is under the First Amendment, and this is going to be interesting to you because remember how I tell you in the context of the Second Amendment, any time anyone brings up tiers of scrutiny, interest balancing, means end, bad, 100% bad, you don't want anything like that. Here's an example of this. So in the context of the First Amendment, because of liberal judicial precedents that have built up as barnacles over the last many decades, when the judge here, Judge Holcomb, decided the First Amendment claim, saying that, you know, the people were being punished for being able to express their First Amendment views associated with the right to keep and bear arms, uh, with trading in guns, with buying and selling guns, all this stuff, basically they had to go through this balance of interest between the governmental interest of regulating the speech, in this case, what's known as commercial speech associated with buying and selling firearms and the like, um, with, the, with the, the benefits to the public from doing it versus the benefits and the restrictions on the, on the right itself. So again, here you have in the First Amendment context, the balancing of the government's interest on the one hand <clears throat> against the interest of the people that want to exercise the First Amendment commercial free speech rights. So in light of that, what Judge Holcomb points out is for a sale of firearms to occur, right, for any kind of sale, including, of course, for firearms or anything firearm related, any firearm related activity like ammunition, the participants must first engage in commercial speech in which the seller informs the buyer about its product, the participants engage in a negotiation, and they set a price and other terms for the exchange. Because commercial speech is usually defined as speech that does not uh, does not uh, involve more than propose a commercial transaction, legislation that restricts sales also restricts commercial speech. So here you have a situation where because they're banning gun shows, that is essentially saying you can't sell guns or engage in commercial speech associated with the gun industry at these gun shows because you ban the shows, which obviously, and the question is, well, why did this occur? And we know why this occurred. It specifically was a targeted content-specific attack on a particular kind of speech that is protected by the First Amendment, i.e. exchanging information about a lawful product, in this case, firearms. So the Judge Holcomb goes on to say that even assuming that merely exchanging money for a firearm is not speech... The sales regulated by those statutes do not involve the physical exchange of a weapon. Here is a critical point. Remember I tell you that these anti-gunners overplay their hands and it comes back and hits them in the back of the head like a cartoon character that throws a boomerang, comes back and hits them on the head? They're, they basically are hoisted on their own petard. Here's an example. So California thought they were like, Hoo, ho, ho, we are intellectual giants in California, right? Ha, ha, ha. We're going to make sure that you can have a gun show. This is, of course, uh, before this current law. But we're going to make sure that you cannot actually take the gun away. You can do the transaction. You can pay for the gun. Uh, you can do the background check, blah, blah, blah. But you can't take possession of it. Ha, 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 ha. But guess what? That blew up in their face. Yes, it did. How so? Because on page 13 of this opinion, Judge Holcomb says, even assuming that merely exchanging money for a firearm is not speech, the sales regulated by these statutes do not involve the physical exchange of a weapon. Bing, 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 bing. You see what happened? California thought it was cute by saying you can't physically exchange a weapon, a arm, at these gun shows. Now you have a judge here and Judge Holcomb is saying, look, there's no exchange of a gun at a gun show. So what are you exchanging? You're exchanging information, which is conveyed by what? By speech. Is there a constitutional amendment with that we that we are familiar with that deals with preventing regulations and restrictions and bans on speech? Oh yeah, it's called the First Amendment. Bingo. You see the problem? California, by overplaying its hand, actually played in to uh, blowing themselves up because the judge says, hey, you can't exchange a firearm, so what's the point of the gun shows? The answer is to talk about gun-related issues, to engage in discussions about gun prices, uh, the gun market, gun negotiations, whatever it is. And guess what? That's exactly what Judge Holcomb says. Then he goes on to say, because sales made in California gun shows must be completed both temporarily and physically removed from the show itself, these new laws that ban gun shows on California public property exceed the mere prohibition of exchanging money for a gun. Instead, the court concludes that the challenge statutes unmistakably, unmistakably regulate commercial speech. 
ha, 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 ha. Blown up, California. Hoist it on your own petard. That's what happens when you try to be too cute for your own good. But let me continue on. So basically what the judge then does is he balances the good and the bad of this and concludes that at the end of the day, that by banning gun sales at these fairgrounds, uh, California has achieved nothing, has achieved nothing in the way of curtailing the overall possession of guns in the county, let alone illegal firearms, citing to some authority, and went on to say that this is a clear, likely, uh, that the, the plaintiffs are likely, likely to prevail under the First Amendment, and this law thus will be enjoined under the First Amendment. So great news. But then the court goes on to actually analyze the situation under the Second Amendment and goes on to point out that, of course, we know the Bruin test, which is really the Heller test, also known as the Bruin test, which you start out with the text of the Second Amendment. Well, the text of the Second Amendment is the right to keep and bear arms, to have arms, to be able to either carry them or to possess them. You have to be able to acquire them first. To acquire them, you got to be able to actually go somewhere and acquire the guns and buy guns and also talk about these issues. So basically, Judge uh, Holcomb here says, indeed, uh, under the plaintiff's Second Amendment claims, there is no doubt that there is a restriction on the ability to keep and possess firearms and also to acquire them because the only way you can get these things is to actually go through the process of acquiring them. And thus, that the text of the Second Amendment is implicated by virtue of the fact that to keep and bear arms, you have to get these guns first. And thus, to get these guns, this California law banning, uh, you know, banning gun shows effectively is restricting, it's regulating, it's curtailing the ability to procure guns and thus affects textually the right to keep and bear arms of California residents. So now that the text is implicated, the burn shifts, of course, what? Burn shifts to the government. And now the government has to come forth and show that there's a historical, long-standing historical tradition going back to 1791, the time our country was founded, of restricting gun gun shows or gun fairs or anything of like, and they simply cannot do that. Now, there is some confusion here on the part of the judge. I think um, the judge could have done a better job here. He reached the right conclusion because he said that the Second Amendment was ultimately violated by the state of California's laws, but I think the way he got there could have been a little clearer. But bottom line, what he says is that uh, the gun shows serve as a modern bazaar and a convention-like setting that, according to plaintiffs, has an incalculable incalculable benefit to the gun-buying consumer. Gun shows, among other things, promote public safety. Furthermore, plaintiffs maintain that gun shows are distinct from gun stores because gun shows are designed uh, so that people will congregate, take their time, engage each other and the vendors and learn in a way that they cannot do so otherwise in the state of California. I think that's all true. This is why we have, you know, the Consumer Electronics Convention in Vegas. Uh, this is why you have SHOT Show in Vegas. This is why you have food conventions all around the country at all the casinos, because people in particular industries want to come together. They want to have lunch. They want to talk. They want to chat. They want to learn about products. And this is how uh, consumers work. And by the way, do not kid yourself. Fair and marketplaces existed long before even the founding of the United States. In fact, it's kind of ironic that one of the big things the anti-gunners always like to talk about in Bruin, for example, was the statute of Northampton, which was around since before literally the birth of William Shakespeare. The reason why I only point that out is the statute of Northampton dealt with governing uh, issues associated with fairs and marketplaces literally hundreds of years before the founding of the United States. And what's interesting, of course, is there's no doubt that there is a long-standing tradition of things involving fairs and marketplaces, but the one thing that the state of California could not do because it's not possible is to show that in the context of any of these regulations of fairs, marketplaces, or whatnot, uh, there are no bans on the ability to sell or talk about or transact business associated with guns, weaponry, uh, or ammunition, or any of these things. It simply did not exist in the history of America. But the judge here seems to suggest that, well, you know, gun shows are a relatively new phenomenon. But that's really not the right analogy. The right analogy is in fairs and marketplaces where people came together to congregate and engage in commercial transactions were there ever any regulations on anything in terms of the transactions or regulations or bans associated with arms, guns, weaponry, any of these things, the answer is undeniably no. And the judge reached the right conclusion, uh, a little bit uh, haphazardly uh, to some degree, but bottom line is got to the right conclusion here, which is, of course, there's no uh, long-standing tradition going back to the founding of restricting the ability to engage in commercial com conversation or commercial transactions associated with arms, guns, or ammunition. Uh, that is simply not an American tradition. It is a new tradition in modern America in a handful of nutty anti-gun states, such as California, but no more, because Judge Hokum has just enjoined uh, this crazy gun ban by the state of California, and it could not have occurred uh, too soon. So, all right, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today. I'll put a link to the case down below. Don't forget to follow me on tw uh, Twitter or X at Four Boxes Diner, and we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner.
Orders up. Table 2A.